Hello. There are two things I'd like to carry on me every single day. Paracord and duct tape. I already have some portable applications for paracord, such as my parafob and my five-second deploy bracelet, but I wanted to come up with some new ideas for duct tape. And two stealth items. The chapstick isn't actually chapstick, and the name tag isn't actually a name tag. The name tag is a razor knife made from a razor blade. I have a video about how to make this. I call it Mac One. And it gives you a nice little razor blade for cutting things. And the chapstick is not a chapstick. You, I've connected it with a little piece of uh, internal uh, strand from paracord, my keychain. And it looks like chapstick. It would pass as chapstick. But when you open it up, you discover it's a duct tape holder. And it still works. You can still dispense items out of it. For instance, this is a two-foot roll of duct tape, which I wrapped around a metal metal cylinder. You also can just use a, a uh, coffee coffee stirrer from uh, McDonald's uh, if you don't have a metal tube like that. You can also snap out that inner inner mechanism to clean out the tube uh, to hold other items. What's nice about keeping it inside here is it keeps it nice and clean. No lint. No pocket lint. Uh, but basically, you just want to pry this off with something like a butter knife and do it very gently so you don't break that inner inner mechanism. Unfortunately, I have yet to discover a bulletproof method of pulling these off without breaking them. Uh, basically, you take something that you can wedge in here and you kind of pry them off. Uh, this one, I broke one, there are four little petals in there. I don't know how well this is going to photograph. There are four little petals in there and one of them broke off and that snaps in with this this part here and it still works quite well with just three of those four pedals in place but sometimes I completely break the mechanism uh, this one for instance just snapped off entirely and I broke it and I'm sorry I don't know a bulletproof method of describing how to do this all I can say is sometimes they break so I wish you luck Okay, I thought of a bulletproof method, although it does mean you have to get two of these to make one. Uh, what you do is basically you need to have a pristine one of the outer body and a pristine uh, unbroken one of the inner inner assembly. And what you do is using something like wire cutters, you just snap down the entire length of the body. Uh, or you use a, a hacksaw, for instance, something so that you can just kill the entire outer part in order to get the inner part in pristine condition. Then, with the second one that you have, what you do is you snap it off uh, using cutters or pliers so that you have a pristine one of these. Now you've got one of each. You've got a pristine exterior, a pristine interior, and these never have problems with assembly. They never break, and at least it never has with me. It's only with disassembly that they sometimes break because they were never designed to. I made this keychain attachment mechanism just out of a little piece of uh, inner strand from paracord, but I want to make a more durable one, so I'm going to make it out of this uh, steel wire that I bought uh, at a hardware store. It's a little bit thinner gauge than a paper clip. That lets you pierce the metal, pierce the plastic. Starting with a clean piece of metal that we didn't use for melting through the plastic, we bend it into a horseshoe shape, put the split ring on it, and attach it into the two holes on the bottom. We want the split ring to have some wiggle room, so I'm going to twist this tight while I have it at a right angle. Seems pretty good. 
now cut off the internal mechanism except for the twist part. I've cut down the inner mechanism. They start off about this length. You want to cut them with a razor knife to about that length. And we're good to go. Snap it into position. Insert the lift mechanism. a completed one. You can carry these on your keychain and they can carry all sorts of things. For instance, $20,000 worth of uncut Peruvian diamonds or the street glass I found in my parking lot. made a bunch of these so far out of different uh, containers, various chapsticks, other brands. Almost all of them I just find on the street. Uh, I think these fall out of people's pockets when they fumble for their keys and they don't notice that they fall into the gutter. Uh, anyway, you can either wrap them with duct tape if you want a supply of duct tape, uh, keep them looking like chapstick, which is sort of a decoy container so that they're a little more stealth. Uh, or take the wrapping off if you like a white look, or this black one will make a nice tactical kit, for instance. And you can fill them with almost anything you could possibly imagine. Uh, some I leave the elevator mechanism in place, others I completely gut. So here's a little sort of uh, tool kit in a sense. I have a chapstick and a, uh, this is a cheapo brand I bought at a dollar store. I'm storing them on the carabiner connection of this Leatherman style PS, which is a uh, pocket keychain multi-tool. Uh, the chapstick and the, the, uh, the other container hold two different things. First, let's look at the uh, Dum Dum uh, chapstick. Inside here we have this uh, little mini bit up top, and then internally we have what's called a True Utility Mini Driver. There's another bit right there, another little bit right there, and this is a micro bit holder for holding micro bits. And all of these can fit into this front section here. So either the micro bit holder or these little screw tips, these little uh, micro half or half size bits. Full size bits will work. Uh, there's maybe a little bit of wobble though. I don't know if you're going to want to use this with a very high torque application. And then if you need uh, more rotary torque, you can stick a key right here. And this gives you more uh, torque tension so that when you're using a, a screwdriver bit, uh, you can use it like this. Or instead of a key, uh, you could use a coin. There's of course a lot of flop here. You have to hold it together. It's sort of not an ideal situation, but this is one of the smallest uh, screwdrivers out there that takes the interchangeable bits. So that was what was held in, in this one. Oh, it doesn't come with this, by the way. I put that in. What it does come with is a fourth bit, but I found that I by removing one bit, by storing uh, this one in this hole like that, storing this at the base, then sticking this one here, then sticking this one on top, I can sort of just barely make it store inside here. So that was this one. This one is micro bits. And it still has the lift mechanism in place. You can store whatever micro bits you want. These are uh, security Torx bits. Uh, We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five there. And then we keep raising the elevator and we have six more. You actually can store one in the middle too. Uh, however, you, you would have to get rid of that lift mechanism corkscrew uh, if you want to store that many inside here. But my goodness, this is 11 different bits, which is an awful lot for such a small little container. So I can either use the, the micro bit adapter that I showed you being stored internally in here. 
has a little magnetic lock. And then using that in this one, which also has a magnetic lock. So that's one option. Or the micro bits also will fit in here. This isn't officially sanctioned by Leatherman, of course. However, you have a little micro bit screwdriver by sticking it in there. And I've actually discovered every single thing you see in this kit can fit a gutted one of these. For instance, a bunch of matches or uh, this tampon. If you're a woman, you may want a discreet way to carry a tampon. I can't think of a better way than this. Uh, or if you just need it for a survival situation, it's a huge amount of cotton, so you can make a lot of fires, make bandages with it, all sorts of applications for cotton. Maybe a AAA battery holder. This is a little spool of solder I use for electrical work, uh, flashlights. There are all sorts of things that you can sort of stick into these containers. And if you leave the elevator mechanism in place, you reduce the internal capacity. This one, for instance, I left the elevator mechanism in place. And you reduce the capacity, but there's still many things you can hold. For instance, this is a little secret stash box that I have filled up with some money. And I know it's sort of a cliche, people showing uh, money. In fact, I know there's another video out there of somebody taking a $100 bill out of their chapstick container. Uh, but you can store pretty much anything that you would want to either keep immediately available on your keys. And what I like is that it stores this standard, this width. So all these various things I've been collecting over the years, making them drugs... Like from a drugstore. Aspirin, for instance. What kind were you thinking of? Another nice reason to keep a chapstick on your keychain is as a late diffuser. When you put this cap on in front of a AAA battery flashlight, you get much more even illumination. Without, without the light diffuser, there's a problem when you do photography or videography that you get what's called a hot spot. Uh, whereas when you add the light diffuser to the front, you get now a nice broad illumination. And if you have a color chapstick container such as this one, uh, you can get different color effects. So these sort of computer thumb drives let you take data and move it from one place to another. They're quite obviously computer data holders though. So I thought it'd be kind of nifty to camouflage one into one of these. I took one of my uh, razor knives and I slit the outside, kind of cracked it open, pried it open, and discovered you can get to the goods by doing that. Uh, they're just a little bit wider than Chapstick. However, some other brands, such as this Cheapo brand I bought at a dollar store, if you sort of squeeze them, you can sort of pry these in there. I'm still looking for an even better container, uh, but I'll show you what I came up with with this. Notice you can still see the activity light flashing back here through the plastic as I transmit data.